Hey Logo Designers, today I wanted to give you a sneak peek into the development of our newest product, Logo Package Forge. So Logo Package Forge started off as Logo Package Sketch about two years ago. And I started building the product, but my developer at the time um, had some personal issues come up and we had to put the project on hold. Uh, ultimately indefinitely because I started working on Logo Package Express 3 and Logo Package Portal. But I'm happy to say that we are back working with formerly Logo Package Sketch, now Logo Package Forge. So for any of you who are unfamiliar with this project, I want to give you sort of an overview of how we started off. So this is a Figma prototype mockup here. And the idea with Logo Package Forge was to really help designers in that first phase of their logo design project, where they're trying to sort of pick a typeface, see what things work with certain icons or marks that they've developed, and just rapidly prototype a lot of different options. So what we see here is that the user can simply type in the name of the company or organization that they're making a logo for and they can see what that logo is going to look like in several different typefaces. The way we do this is we allow you to create sets over here, which are just groups of fonts. You can look at your entire font list and simply drag fonts you want into new sets. So in this example, uh, we've set up some tech fonts that are good for tech companies, some fonts that are good for fashion companies, I've also got a goofy set here. Maybe these are display fonts or something for a little bit more fun, friendly brand. Uh, but these could be anything you want. These sets could be by your clients or whatever. When you type in your logo type, you choose a set and then you can just make logos and it will put that word in all of those typefaces very quickly and easily allow you to see what they're going to look like. The other feature, the other big feature of Logo Package Forge is that you can set um, a mark to go along with the type and generate all of those variations very quickly as well. So here we see a centered variation of a logo with the mark on top and the type below, and we see it in all of the different typefaces that we have in our set. So you can see very quickly, you can rapidly generate a lot of variations and see what's working and what's not. Additionally, this allows you to bring some font organization to the design application that you're working in. So this is Illustrator and there are plenty of font organization uh, tools, but they don't live inside of Illustrator. You have to go somewhere else to see what the fonts are and then you still have to go and find them in Illustrator. So this is a quick way to get through your fonts and organize them natively in Illustrator. So that's the overview. And two years ago, I sent out a survey with the same sort of breakdown and explanation. And I got uh, user feedback to see if people wanted this and if I should build it. So the results of that survey were basically only 5% of people polled said that they would never use the product. So it's pretty much a 95% positive sentiment, and that encouraged me to go ahead and build the extension. But like I said, I had problems with uh, the developer at the time, and we got pretty, pretty far along um, into the development, and then the project stopped. So this year, this final quarter of 2024, I have re-engaged um, development with a new developer, and we are moving along nicely. So I'd like to give you a little demo. Here we are in Illustrator and you can see I have the Logo Package Forge extension loaded up. Again, this is uh, in progress development. So, you know, we have icons missing and we have some extra characters on the screen that won't be there in the final release. In fact, everything is subject to change for final release, but uh, this is where we are so far. So basically we have completed the font management portion of the extension. 
So you'll see we have our all fonts list, and this is gonna list out all of the fonts that we have on the computer. And it's also gonna give us a nice preview of what those fonts look like. And you can um, open up any font that you want by clicking the drop down arrow, and you can see the different variations that are inside of the typeface. So um, there's a lot of terminology. The proper terminology here would be that all round Gothic is the typeface, but all of the different fonts, which are like styles of that font, um, they're called fonts. And then all of the fonts together make up the font family. But for terminology within this extension, um, I will just refer to the typeface as the font. So all around Gothic is the font and then all of the actual fonts within are referred to as styles. So you can click the drop down to view all of the different styles for the font. You can hide any fonts that you don't want to see in this all fonts list by just clicking the eyeball icon and then that will put all of those fonts in a hidden folder. So if we look at this hidden folder or set, you can see that I have a bunch of typefaces in here. And this would be sort of a convenient way to get rid of all of the fonts for other languages that you don't need. Um, and at any point, if you wanna bring one of these fonts back, you can just click the eyeball and it'll come back. Like currently, if we went to the spot on the list where active would be right after Academy here, there's nothing there. But if I turn active back on, then we will see that active is available in the fonts list now. Now you may notice that active doesn't have a preview and not all of the fonts on your system are going to be able to be previewed by Logo Package Forge, but when you generate your variations, it will still set your logo in that typeface. So you'll get a preview out on the pasteboard, but you may not always get a preview in the actual extension. In addition to hiding fonts, you can favorite fonts. So maybe you have 20 or 30 fonts that you just always use and you don't really wanna make a set for it, but you want to have it noted that those are your favorites. Um, all you have to do is click the star icon and that will automatically add it to the favorites list. So if we look at the favorites set here, we can see all of our favorites in one spot. Then there is set creation and management. So if I want to make a set of script fonts, for example, I would just come over to the left sidebar here and click new set. That creates a set and I can click the three dots here, choose rename set, and I will call this set script. And now I have a new set. The set is empty by default, and we do have some language that would uh, tell you what to do here, but it's not implemented yet. So what we'll do is go back to our all fonts section, and I'm just going to choose uh, some script fonts. I can take any script font that I find and just click it and drag it into the folder. And now you can see that if we go to the script set, I have this script font here, but I can also select multiple fonts at a time. So if I continue to come through here and look at these, and I'm, these aren't all going to be script fonts, but just for example, um, I choose this font, I choose this one. I'm using the command key on the keyboard to choose multiple different fonts at a time. And now you can see that we have one font in the script set. I'm going to drag these into the script set and now we have four because I had selected three more sets. Now, as we create these sets, um, we may want very specific styles within a font and not the whole font. So the default behavior is when you drag a font into a set, it only activates the regular version of that font. You can see that Avebury here is the only font that I chose that has multiple different styles, but it goes with the closest style to regular that it can find and turns that on. So if you were to generate logos from this set, 
then you wouldn't get every single style of the of every font that you put in here. It's only the styles that you have enabled and the only styles that are enabled by default are the style that is closest to regular. If you do want to add multiple styles as you're creating your set, then let's look at a, let's try to find a script font here that has many different um, styles. So typically the script fonts don't, so I think I'm going to just choose something that I know has a bunch of styles, uh, like Avenir Next. So if I click onto Avenir Next, then again, you can see the regular is the font that's chosen by, or the style that is chosen by default. But I can also command click, say, heavy and bold, and I want italic as well. I want to see all of these styles in the set. So now when I drag this over, um, we're going to see that instead of just adding the one font, it has added several fonts. And if I go to Avenir, then we'll see bold, heavy, italic, and regular are all enabled. And every other style in this font is disabled. Now, you don't have to make this choice when you are dragging the fonts into the set. You can also edit things uh, once they're in a set. So this set only has these four uh, styles enabled for the Avenir Next font. But if I want to turn on heavy italic, I just click the plus icon. And now you can see heavy italic is in the active state. And if I decide I don't want that, then I can just press X and that will remove it from the state. So this has been an overview of our development progress so far with Logo Package Forge. Uh, you can view all of your fonts and organize them into sets. You can select certain fonts as favorites, and you can hide fonts that you don't want to see ever. Um, and then the next phase of this will be implementing the previews where you can generate any word that you type in uh, in all of the fonts within a set. So I'm looking forward to being able to share that with you, and thanks for watching.